Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amud and Shakti Vel. We will continue with our code refactoring playlist. In our last video, we have seen how we can create, uh, you know, the different implementation for an abstract class and how we can pass the behaviors to our test methods, right? So this is absolutely working fine. But you know, if I want to provide another implementation with non-mandatory personal details, how will I do that? Maybe we can pass this entire thing from the data provider itself. For example, right? I can feed it new mandatory personal details right and also i want to run this particular test with one more set of test data uh, that is basically um, with non-mandatory right personal details so my test method will accept two things now one is the test data itself and another one is the behavior right so the behavior is of add new customer page or new customer page right and this name is actually not even so what we can do this i am not satisfied with the name maybe we can just change this to or go to refactor and rename and we will rename this to uh maybe customer details page something like this okay so that uh it's it's more uh meaningful right add new is a, is a verb right so we don't want to do that so we'll just rename it in all the places and we'll rename it right so now uh, name looks fine we are passing in the behavior and i will also add parallel equal to true so that uh, these data provider values will be ran in parallel right and uh, mm -hmm. it's not working mm -hmm. okay sorry sorry guys sorry guys the data provider needs to give the data provider needs to supply the data in the parallel so that these tests will run in parallel right let me just run the test engine.xml and see uh, how this works i have recently migrated to macbook uh, m1 air guys it's really really good i'm just getting used to it so you may not see me coding as fast as i do in windows but yeah i'm just getting used to it so now the tests are running in parallel that's absolutely fine and i think there is one test that gets stuck uh, maybe uh, the framework creators haven't uh, uh, you know handled the parallel execution it seems so we will close it maybe uh, we will not give this for now and then just for us we are not uh, solving the problem uh, parallel execution problem now so for us for us the first main problem is we want to check whether we can able to uh, pass in different behaviors right so let's first do it I wasn't aware that they have not uh, configured the test to be run in parallel. So now the tests are getting run and each time it, we are passing different behaviors. So first time it will enter e email address and the password. The second time we will only enter email. Again guys, I have given the uh, considered that email is only the mandatory field, but yeah. You know, it, there are a lot of fields you can play around with them right so you can pass in the behaviors that's what the main thing is here good and next next problem that we have is we are hard coding the values that we will solve it right so now the dash only enter both the test got passed it's good so now we are hard coding the values here even though we are passing the test data we are not passing it to the uh, customers facade or you know this particular implementation classes so what we do we go here we go to the uh, customers page it's a customer details page and then you know instead of hard coding these values what i can do i will basically make uh, public and uh, uh, it is of personal data type so personal data personal data guys this is not static this uh, because this will be different for different threads right this value uh, the personal data value will be different for different threads so we are not using static here so that's the main thing okay when to use static when not to use static so it's a very important thing to know right and let it be uh, uh, in the in the declared state we will initialize in our uh, you know while initializing our child classes right our child classes is this and uh, and there is another child classes here right so what we do we will create a constructor public non-mandatory personal details constructor and that takes in that takes in a personal data type right so personal data 
personal data right and then i can basically tell super dot personal data equal to personal data and then there is one problem here we need to pass it yes i know uh, we will do that and um, we'll go to the mandatory personal so again public mandatory personal details and this also takes in personal data right so personal data personal data this dot sorry super right we are, we are setting the super class uh, variable personal data with this particular data right so we have to use super keyword right and now let's go to the test and here we can pass the personal data itself right and yeah again guys this might look little ugly okay why this guy is passing the personal data here but you know imagine if you know about difference injection and all that this becomes very very easy okay so let's end this with semicolon all good now and then the whole test will absolutely work fine right but again there is scope for improvement guys so whatever we have created here using builder design pattern you can basically create this using help of fixture factory okay fixture factory this is absolutely a very good library that i have already covered okay i leave this in the description leave this in description you can basically go through this library and construct your pojo okay you don't have to worry about um, you know um, you know constructing all this with the help of builder pattern you can create some templates and based on the template this fixture factory will create pojos for you so you can also integrate this fixture factory with faker library to automatically generate data so whatever i speak might not be uh, completely uh, understandable by you now so please go ahead and watch the video that uh, i will leave in the description okay so that's a very very good uh, thing so you can optimize this with this okay now we have almost done so look at our test it's more readable now we are passing in behaviors again guys we haven't added any assertion but any test case should have some assertion okay so please use assertion uh, without assertion don't create any test and uh, there has to be at least one assertion in a test and maximum of two tests in two assertion okay don't write so many assertion logic here but what i want to convey here is you all know how to do the assertion maybe use br brilliant uh, libraries like assertj you can also create custom custom assertions okay custom assertions with the help of assertj okay these are all really good things okay maybe learn about them if time permits i will also cover that but for now let's take a comparison between the test what we have created and what they have created okay let's go here look at this test guys this is the test that guy has created so they are loading the url here they are creating driver instance they are passing the driver instance unnecessarily these are all very minute details right setting the username setting the password clicking on login why do i really have to do it right that's really really noisy right and look at the test the test is almost 83 lines of code right so don't do this okay if you notice he is setting email password all these things here but here in our test we are just passing the behavior okay we are just passing the different behaviors look my test it's just five lines of code how clean it is okay so it's understandable we are performing the login we are navigating to the customer's page and then we are we are creating a, a you know customer first aid and then we are creating a new customer with this particular data again guys you can replace this constructor with a static method call which you already know how to do that for more readability and here um, you know you can add one assertion okay one or two assertion using assert j so that's how a test should be look this anyone you know you know this is very very nice they have a lot of logger statements i have removed all the logger code okay i am not a big fan of using log for j in my test automation because there is no real advantage okay uh, there are people uh, in the test automation world they will tell okay we will use test uh, you know log for j but why you guys need a log for j okay if you have an extent report or an alu report write all the logs to the report itself don't use log for j okay if some you know people in the automation tells okay use log for j you ask them what is the real advantage you get out of it you will not get any advantages guys okay most importantly they have written a lot of code here in the test class which what we have optimized here very clean code if you want to add more functionalities here there is no provision to add more functionalities he has to create one more test and then he has to pass in you know all the hard coded values he has to pass it again but here i can create one new uh, child class okay i have to just go and create one more child class i can just uh, you know overload the method 
that is fill form with whatever the values that they want to fill right very very easy right so you can understand how easy it is and you imagine this is how their page layers are in the login page they have written something like this add customer space see guys this is really understandable can you guys understand what is happening here very very nicely right but look at our code look at our code so we have a customer details page which is very very clean again i don't need this at all uh, i have removed the hard coded values and here instead of email you just need to tell personal data dot get uh, user email right and then here also it's personal data dot get user password right and the same way this is personal data dot get uh, is mail right so so it's as good as this so very very clean code so this is how you should also write so look at our page classes they are really really neat okay so if i go here so they are all having one or two methods which is easily understandable we use composition so that you know we have arranged our things in a much better way than what they have done so this is how a real good coders could code right so i think i have made some sense with this particular code refactoring playlist if you want me to create more videos on um, anything else please do leave it in the comments and again most importantly guys please do like subscribe the channel okay i see there are youtube channels um, that teach only xpath and css having 7000 6000 subscribers i'm still you know wondering why i'm doing all these videos because i have only 4 to 5 5k subscribers so so yeah i'm i'm not really concerned about it but you know please if you find this video helpful please share it with your friends you know so that it motivates us to create more videos right so thank you again guys i'll see you all in another good uh, uh, video until then tata bye bye you all have a very good happy uh, 2022 new year i wish you all very good luck thank you guys bye